Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have an upload talking about how you can make coins right now inside of FIFA 22 at this stage of the game. Of course, we are headed towards a very important time of the year and that is team of the season. And it is crucial that you have as many coins as possible heading into this promo because it is one of the most exciting times. The content is great. The SBCs are great, but you need coins if you want to do any of those SBCs or get involved with any of the players that are going to be out. So we're going to take a look today at how you can maybe grow your coin balance, whatever number you have in the top left-hand corner of your FIFA Ultimate Team, whether it's 10,000 coins, whether it's 10 million coins, we're going to be looking at some trading methods to increase that number in this video today. Now, as we get into talking about some of those trading methods, one thing that I have to say is this is going to be a different video than you normally see regarding trading methods and how to make coins, right? A lot of people post videos about how to make coins and they show you methods that work for a day or a week. And then after that, they don't work anymore. And then you're stuck. What I want to talk to you about today and try to teach you today is showing you how to find your own trading methods based off of what we look at, knowing why cards are up in price, where that demand is coming from, and also how you can find those own spots of demand and, and learn to find prices that are up on the market that you can trade with year round in this game. It's the thought process behind why the cards are moving, not showing you, hey, go trade with these cards right now because they're up in price, right? That's what I'm gonna focus on today in this video. So if you're excited for it, make sure to thumbs up and of course, subscribe if you are new. Now we're gonna spend a little bit of time here at the very beginning talking about low budget trading methods because this is a really, it's really easy. If you have like 10,000 coins, you can find so many of these lower budget cards and you kind of have to grind. You kind of have to grind the flips over and over and over because on a low budget uh, quantity is huge. Buying these cards and flipping them 10, 20, 30, 40 cards at a time, the more cards you flip, the more profit you are going to make because it's all about that repetition. So right now, here's a little filter that I have found and set up. Just because right now, um, rare silver cards are in demand, especially the goalkeepers, uh, because of some of the SBCs that are out right now, the league SBCs that are out, the uh, the they're right now in foot birthday, they're putting out these daily SBCs for the tokens, for foot birthday swap tokens, and those require rares, right? Boom, 600 coins for this rare goalkeeper. Instantly, I know I can sell him at 1,200 coins within the hour just because he has a rare silver goalkeeper, right? So bang, that's what you can do. Number one, you can find silver cards like this that are up in price for a certain reason. Again, rare silver goalkeepers are up in price right now. Now let's let's find some other silvers, right? Let's go Premier League silver defenders. How are these doing? I think these are all like 1,700 coins a piece uh, at the moment. I believe these are always around 1,700 coins because of the league SBCs and that kind of holds their value up in price. So you can sit here and try to snipe these cards uh, they're going to fluctuate day in and day out. But one thing you can also look at is you can watch these cards that pop up here as people list them. And you can compare the price and see that this Kilman card, an English center back in the Prem, he actually sells for like 2,000 coins. You can see 2.2K, 2.3K with a couple undercuts underneath that. Uh, so you, you find these cards that pop up here at the 59th minute when you're sniping some of these silvers. Um, under this filter and you'll actually find that some of these guys for 1.7 you can buy them and list them for like 2.3 2.5k depending on the card some cards if they're usable sell for more with chem styles too as well so if a card has you know especially since these are defensive cards if a chem style is on it it's going to sell for a few more coins now how can you find silvers or non-rare golds that are expensive like this on the market here's how you go on the foot bin if you're like nate okay i'm watching this video and silver rare defenders or silver rare goalkeepers aren't up anymore right go to foot bin click the players drop down click fifa 22 players and then you're going to sort by version you're going to go down to silver click all silver and then sort by a nation sort by a league do a little bit of research spend you know five minutes looking through here and then sort by the price order by price right here and this is going to show you the silver cards that are up in price for whatever reason. And this is gonna find you some of those filters that I was just showing you, right? It looks actually like right mids from the league one are all about like 1.7K, right mids, right wings, especially if they're French. It looks like those are up a little bit in price. So that might be a part of the market where you can go and try to bid and snipe on some of those French right mids or left mids from the league one because they're up a little bit because of SBC demand. 
and you might be able to make some coins with some, with some quick flips there. So that would be my advice if you're on a low budget. You can do the same thing with gold commons because gold commons are also very in demand as well. What about gold common Premier League defenders? What do these sell for? All right, these don't go for anything else uh, super extra, but some of these um, go for a little bit more. You can also do the same search that I just did with silvers. You can do it for gold commons. That's actually the number one uh, way that I would recommend trying to find gold common cards because some of these gold commons go from like 600 coins to like 2K every single day. So go on Footbin and look for those fluctuations in price. That's going to be an insane way to make coins. A little grindy again, like I said, but if you're on a low budget, you flip those cards over and over and over, you're going to see that coin total go up very rapidly on this game trading with some of those cards and some of those methods so that's kind of my less than uh 10k 50k budget trading methods right there let's move up the ladder a little bit let's talk about if you have maybe let's say like you know a hundred thousand coins maybe a little bit more than that we're going to do something here called the shadow and hunter chemistry style method this this is a method where you're going to be trading with cards that have chemistry styles applied to them if i could get the filters to work correctly uh on this game because cards that have hunters and shadows applied to them sell for more on the market um just because that's the way that it is right so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to set up this filter special shadow again 9.6k around 10.5 is the max price and then the max buy now you can put as whatever you want on it and then you're going to search here and go to the 59th minute as fast as possible because what you're going to try to find here are people that are listing up cards with the shadow and hunter chemistry style since they are the most um popular chemistry styles on this game you're going to try to find cards back here that are listed up like this Barella, maybe this onyeka card here how much does this Barella inform sell for this is where footbin is going to be very handy and you're going to have to learn some prices of these cards so this 86 Barella inform sells on the market for 27,000 coins is what footbin tells me but 26k with the shadow chem style right that's going to get bought because somebody knows they can probably sell that Barella, which i'm going to look up right now on the market for about i'm assuming 30k i'm assuming this is going to be 30k with the shadow right so that's kind of what you're doing with this method you're finding cards with very attractive and very popular chemistry styles on them boom yeah you can see he's probably selling for right around 29 30,000 coins boom very very easy sale on that barella card so that's kind of the method here you can do it with the hunter chemistry styles as well you're going to go min price um 9, coins or like 9500 and then you're going to go max price 10 to 50 search to the 59th minute make sure you use the special filter there as well and then you're going to kind of you can compare price when you get back here as well you just have to make sure that you don't have more than one card past the one hour mark see there's a lot of cards here listed past the hour mark for the hunter chem style method so shadow is probably going to be a little easier i'm going to drop this to 10 to 50. this is again a little bit of a grindy method but instead of making two to three hundred coins per card um on silvers what we're going to try to do here is potentially make somewhere around like two to three thousand coins per card with these a little bit higher budget but higher potential profit range on these items so like kappa with a shadow chemistry style for twenty thousand coins right i'm going to go check this card out kappa the right back rule breakers and obviously if this is a deal somebody else is probably going to know that it's that it's a good price so kappa with a um shadow chemistry style sells for how much he sells for looks like 20 okay maybe about 21 to 22,000 coins so that might not be a good flip but that's a really easy way to learn prices of cards and you'll start to recognize ones when they pop up that are good prices to undercut on and you'll find some good deals that way again a little bit of a grindy method but worth it now here's another one right this is also a, car, a method that works very well at this stage of the game for lower budgets like 100k a little bit more to maybe 100k to 200k you can trade with the 10 20 30 method because there are so many special cards that are in the game at this time of the year that there's so many cards here that are going to be expiring on bid that might actually sell for a little bit more than what they're listed at right so what we're going to do here is we just use the 10 20 30 method and we're going to look for cards on bid like this Yunberg um heroes card right have foot bin ready at your left side Yunberg sells for about 18 19 000 coins so maybe you try to snag this on bid for like 16k and sell it there right a couple thousand coins of profit per card that's what you're going to look for now of course there's going to be a lot of these cards that don't actually sell for too much so you're going to ha kind of have to filter in filter through Luca Bacchio right especially from the cards that are from earlier on in the year 
um, from earlier promos, and especially when you see like Team of the Week cards showing up here, especially if they are from earlier on. Ooh, like this Upa Meccano. 86 rated Upa Meccano in form is a 50,000 coin card. So I'm going to add this to my transfer targets and see if I can win this bid for like 40K and sell it for 50K. So that's the kind of trading that you're going to do with this method. Again, I know it's a little bit of a grind. Tap Sobo would be another great one here, of course. The more meta and the more popular card is, this guy sells for 22K, all right? Maybe you try to get this on bid for like 17, 18K. Sell it on for 22 with the shadow chemistry style as well. That's how the 10, 20, 30 method works. Tried and true, but it works at any time. And you can trade and flip cards literally year round using that method. So that's why I wanted to talk about that today. Uh, now, let's move into a little bit more, right? Those are some of the grindy trading methods. Not necessarily my favorites by any stretch of the imagination. Now, some of my favorite trading methods is actually just using fluctuation trading because cards move up and down on the market every single day because they are, it's kind of like stocks, right? They kind of move up and down on the market because people buy them, people sell them, people use these cards. And you you know, Footbin's gonna be your number one help with this. But here's an example, right? This, this would be if you have 100,000 coins or more, specifically if you have a couple hundred K, like 500 K plus, and this is the trading method that I do, the same trading method with you know a couple hundred thousand coins, this has gotten me from a couple hundred K to 10 million plus. This is the number one method that I do like year round all the time on this game. And it's just fluctuation trading, right? This Ibanez, future star center back card, who is currently about 48, 49,000 coins on the market, a very usable item, a very popular item as a Brazil center back. And all that I know is this guy's price on Footbin fluctuates a lot. Let me show you what's going on and let me explain this method to you. So Ibanez right now is like 48, 49,000 coins. He is up in price at the moment. How do I know that? Well, Let's take a look at his graph from the last two days. He reaches low points of around 40,000 coins multiple times per day, 40K right here, 42,000 coins right here, and also a couple times per day, he reaches peaks. 47,000 coins yesterday, 45K, and then 47K just a few hours ago, he went down to 42. Now he's back up at 48 to 49, right? He is up in price at the moment. So what I would do is, I would set this card maybe on my uh, add a one to my transfer targets so that I know to check this card every so often. Maybe check Footbin every so often. You can actually set up price alerts on Footbin um, or go into the market tracker mode here on Footbin and add um, add a new trade in. And then every time you can go back and take a look at this tracker on Footbin. Um, which I'm not logged in right now, so I can't use it. But if you log into Footbin and you add your trades to this, you will see when cards are low based on their fluctuations. And you'll know, okay, Ibanez hit 40,000 40, coins again. I'm going to buy him because I know that at some point in the next day or two, he should fluctuate back up to about 48,000 coins, right? How do you find cards like this? That's the number one question a lot of people always ask. Well, you're going you're gonna to just have to look across the market because the, the few things that I always look for when cards that I want to trade with that fluctuate up and down in value all the time, the number one key thing that you have to have is rarity, it has to be popular, and it has to be meta. Those are the three things actually that are very crucial for these cards to be moving around. Now, we have so many special cards in this game because we've had so many promos, we've had so many Team of the Week cards, and as you start to look at some of these graphs, you will notice that these cards move around in price a lot. They fluctuate a ton. How about Kyle Walker? 124,000 coins at the moment. This is just a guess. What, what was he selling for yesterday? He was 107, got, went to 122. Today, he was at 111 again, and now he's up to 124, 125,000 coins. So here's another great example of a card that would be great to fluctuation trade with because he is rare. He is out of packs. And he's a card that a lot of people probably like to use. It's Kyle Walker, right? He is a very fast and pacey right back in the Premier League, Manchester City. Very well-known player. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for this Kyle Walker card on a normal fluctuation. Ooh, 116 right there. See? So let's see if, you know, this card all of a sudden, maybe for the next two or three hours, kind of has a normal fluctuation and goes back down to like 110,000 coins. I know that I will be able to sell this Kyle Walker at 125K at some point in the next day. So boom, that will be what I look for is that fluctuation and that just natural movement, right? Of course, 
we have tons of SBC and tons of content this year on this game. And almost any single day, a piece of content or an SBC could come out that would drop some of these prices. So that's the only real risk with this is EA putting out a lot of content that would drop some prices. But most of the time, you're just going to see these prices bounce back and forth between the next day and the day after that and the day after that. And you're going to be able to buy these cards and flip them and trade with them at that level. So that's my number one trading method. I literally use the same trading method just with higher budget cards on this game. That silver card that we bought, boom, I just flipped him, right? I just sold him for 1200 coins, easy dub. But that's the same trading method that I use with that Kyle Walker is the same thing I use when I trade with some of these icons that you see here, right? I bought two icon moments desai yesterday for 1.2 million coins apiece. He was just low at the time. I knew because of seeing his price rise and fall before that he would rise up to where he is right now at 1.3 million coins. And after a 5% EA tax, I would be making a nice amount of profit on that card. So especially if you're in the higher tier range uh, of trading with a lot of coins, like over a million coins, I would start to look into some of these icons, right? Don't just try to think about, okay, what filter do I need to have so I can find icons to get listed up? Learn the prices of the icons. Again, that's the key to all of this. All the methods that we've talked about today is learning the prices of the icons. I know that this Cafu is actually kind of down today. One, he's usually like 1.25 mil. Um, I'm pretty sure this is a Shin. He's 1.4 as well. He was 1.35 last night, so he is up a little bit in price. I sold an Essien at 1.57. He is 1.5 flat at the moment. So if I would see this Essien drop back down into the 1.4 range, which is where I bought him yesterday, then I would be very interested in potentially buying him for a quick flip. Uh, on the market. I sold, I sold a Schweinsteiger for 1.55. He is 1.6. So he is still up, right? That's kind of the way that you can trade with some of these cards. And again, it's all about learning the prices of the card, learning about the fluctuations and um, picking the right cards because yes, yeah, some cards don't move as much. That's why doing a little bit of research on footbin can be crucial Wow, 1.05 for Canavaro. Are you serious? Uh, that's, oh my gosh, man. This card is really, really low today. Uh, I'm going to take a gamble on that because usually somebody else thought that was a good price too. Usually this Canavaro is selling for like 1.2 uh, mil, 1.15. So that would easily be about a 30 to 40,000 coin profit on that card right there. That's the kind of deals that you can find when you know prices and when you spot those fluctuations on this game. There's nothing crazy right now. It's making people panic sell that kind of varo. It's just the fact that his price is naturally moving up and down on the market. So again, those are some of my favorite ways to trade on this game, no matter what budget you are on. Now, one thing I'll talk about a little bit as well is uh, we mentioned the content that EA drops, right? If you remember a couple of days ago, EA released a year in review player pick. It was on Sunday. They released this player pick, and this was a very exciting SBC that a lot of people were very excited for. They went out and they did it. And when people see SBCs like this, they go sell cards to do this SBC, right? Let's take a look at a card that I remember from Sunday that was a great card to trade with because of his fluctuations. It also helped that the Ramos SBC was dropped. So on Sunday, this Kempembe was 717,000 coins. Those two SBCs, Ramos, and the year in review player pick come out, people sell cards to go and do those SBCs, but then they go and they buy the cards right back because that is what often happens with these SBCs, right? You sell a card to, to go to the SBC, you hope you get something insane, oh, but you didn't get anything that great, oh, I gotta buy my team back, right? So this Kempembe went from 700K back down to 630, and just a few hours later, he was back to 692. I know that's an expensive card that not everybody can afford, but there are fluctuations like that all the time, every single day on this game because of that exact same type of movement. If you see days where we get really insane content on the market, really, really good um, SBCs are released, you're going to see cards drop in value, but you're also going to see them bounce back in value if that card is very popular, very rare, very meta. It happens with gold cards, right? I, I even believe like Cristiano Ronaldo's gold card had a fluctuation like that on Sunday. It wasn't just like huge expensive cards like that. Where's Cristiano Ronaldo gold, right? Ronaldo was 130. He went down to 117. And then yesterday, look where he is back up right to right now. He's back to 130,000 coins because people have kind of bought this card back from that panic selling 
that happened over the weekend. So it works the best if you use the out of packs cards. This team of the week tab on Footbin is the best place to go for this. And I know a lot of you guys know this as well, but I just want to keep it very simple for people that are still learning into the trading world. There's there's nothing wrong. Wherever you're at on your trading journey, if you have 10,000 coins and you're just starting, if you're at 100,000 coins, you're just starting, or if you have 10 million and you've been doing this all year round, I feel like it's always good to talk through some of these trading methods and to kind of get a refresher on how you're making coins, why the cards are moving. And again, you see these cards here, right? Uba Makano went for 47K. Okay, that really wasn't a good buy. Tapsoba probably could sell them at like 24. That was a decent buy. And again, we talked about that Kyle Walker as well. So there's just, there's so many opportunities to trade on this market. And those ways and those methods that I just showed you are some of my favorite ways, but there's even more out there. So if those methods at all today helped you and you think you're going to help, that's going to help you make some coins during this team of the season, approaching team of the season period, make sure to leave a thumbs up on this video. And of course, if you have any questions, drop a comment down below and subscribe if you are new. That's going to be the video for today, lads. Happy trading. Good luck make some coins and come back to the channel because we have so many more videos that talk about the market day in and day out. If you like this video, again, another cheeky plug to hit the subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. So it has been Nate, the foot accountant. I will catch you guys later. Peace.